Hey, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? All right, I'm still trying to uh, learn how to use this looper of mine. It's like a new guitar toy and stuff. I made a few mistakes with the timing and this and that, but it was nevertheless, yeah, it was still fun. Anyway, um, hey, welcome. This is um, Kevin. I am uh, Hats and Guitars, basically. It's uh, me at work at JJ Hat Center, uh, New York's oldest hat shop. I am there 24 years, no more, and uh, the hat shop is there since 1911. And uh, I generally make videos on my day off from my room with my guitars here. And uh, I make videos from work on Sundays after work, uh, Sunday mornings sometimes. Depends. Sometimes Saturday mornings. Yeah. Scam likely. Phone says scam likely on it. Let's get rid of that. Anyway, um, so I'm working at the shop for a real long time, and uh, I like to make videos to help people out. Basically, it started a long time ago when people used to ask me how to roll hats. Um, it's a very difficult thing to describe verbally or to write down in a paragraph. Um, hold hat upright, punch out crown, punch out crown so it's open like a bell. Let's see if we can do this. Turn down brim all the way around so that the hat is a complete open bell-like position. Open crown, brim turned down all the way around. It's not exactly easy to describe the folding parts. Um, basically, I would tell people go to the video. I made like a, you know, a really fast YouTube video with an iPad or iPod or something, and I would instead of trying to write it or explain it, I would just tell them go to the video and you know you'll see how to roll it. But anyway, getting back to rolling it, um, and and that's how these videos start. Getting back, um, yeah. You open up the hat like this, you make sure the hat is dry, okay? This is how to fold a hat, a crushable hat. All right. The hat is dry, you're good. Brim down, all the creases out, so it's like a bell, I always say. The next thing is the long way. This is the long way. You're going to fold the hat like this, okay? Brim to brim, the long way. So fold it brim to brim. Remember, crown is open. You don't want that pinch pinched like this. You want it open. All right, that was like step two, I think, or step one. Anyway, brim to brim the long way. You can take the hat, fold it, just not fold it, hold it the long way, this way, flat, so you kind of have a U, U-shaped thing going. You see this? Okay. What I'm going to do next is press down and flatten this, so we'll enhance that U, so the whole hat is a U. Okay, here we go. Down in the middle. Remember, this creases out and then down in the middle. Okay, so here's that U shape I was talking about. So what you basically just did was you, you turned your brim down, you opened up all your creases, and you folded it the long way, and then flat, like that. Okay, next what I do is I kind of, I neaten this stuff up so it's getting ready to fold. So I kind of do like this here, watch. Yeah. Okay, get it ready. No, it's going to roll this way, but it's not a fold. I'm not lopping it into quarters. I'm rolling it carefully and slowly, gently, letting the hat kind of guide me so it's not totally tight, like a really tight, you know, you're not rolling some uh, 420 here, you know. It's more like you're rolling as loose as the hat wants to go. You let the hat kind of tell you. Now, the hat is going to be stiff at first, so it's going to be harder to roll. It's sh small. Don't worry about it. Let the hat just roll loosely like this and big. As the hat softens up and gets older, it's going to, you know, roll a little bit tighter. The first roll is always the biggest and the hardest. Um, after you do it the second time, it gets a little tighter, like, you know, smaller. Third time, fourth time, it becomes easier to roll. Okay, if you notice, there are no folds or sharp edges, nothing folded or creased, there's no pinches, everything is round, round curves, all these shapes are round. The idea is that when you open it, there are no fold marks or creases anywhere. Okay, brim goes back up, 
Now there's going to be a crease and two pinches there that are kind of set in. You should be able to see like little footprints where those creases are. Basically you just press on the top and it comes back. You could neaten it up, but yeah, it's a nice center crease there. Okay. Then the two pinches, the same thing. If it's steamed in, you just feel for it and they pop right back. Center creases, it's hard to see on the black hat, but it worked out. Now you're probably wondering what this string is, that's the wind cord. If you have a wind cord, uh, just let it, just ignore it. You fold it and let it hang free. But when it comes time to put the hat back together like I just did, what you do is you open up this loop, put it around the crown of the hat at the bottom of the band, and then you take that button and you pull it back tight so it's somewhere near the bow. And you get rid of all that slack and the string is kind of taut again. Okay, bow tip. So that's the, uh, the wind cord. You basically just ignore it when you're rolling. Here we go again. How to roll a hat down. Open it up in half the long way. Flatten it. U shape. Round roll. Ba, 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 roll. Ignoring the wind cord. Let it do whatever. Okay, now when it comes time to pack this baby, you do not throw it in a tight suitcase and expect it to survive. You've got to have some kind of little tight capsule for it if you're doing that. These hats are meant to go in your like little bag, you know, your little carry-on bag like this kind of thing. You know, loose bag. Um, you know, if you, you put your iPad at the bottom and then you put this on top. You don't put heavy stuff on top of it. This is meant to go like in a loose gym bag, a, a loose pocketbook, a shopping bag, your breast pocket is fine, jacket pocket, coat pocket. Things like that are really cool uh, in your gig bag, your yoga bag, or whatever you got. But if you're putting it in a suitcase like you're traveling, um, you need some sort of a little mailing tube for it. Uh, what I like to use is a shoe box. I just get the, the box from my Nikes. It's my new sneakers. I just got these. And they came with a really cool box. And um, I could usually fit his and hers hats in there too. Two hats will fit in a Nike box or Adidas or whatever. So um, those are fine. That's a good enough capsule for traveling. Better would be if you go out and you buy a bottle of, um, a bottle of wine or champagne or uh, scotch or something that comes in those little cardboard tubes. You know those, right? It's about the size of this. It's a little bigger, like a bottle size, in case you got a big three inch brim or something. And it's about the perfect width, you know. So yeah, go to the liquor store and look for those products that come in that like little cardboard tube, you know. And if you don't drink, uh, give it to a friend for Christmas or something and just save the tube, you know, and wrap the bottle or, or use it for cooking or something. We'll give it to a wino and make his day. But um, you can use that tube, that mailing tube thing is fine. Other times you could just go to the post office and find a mailing tube. That also works. Um, you can improvise. There are tubes you could find and boxes. A simple carton, a box of the right size will work. But you cannot put this right in a very crowded, compressed uh, suitcase, pack it full of lots of crap and expect it to look good. It's crushable, rollable, but you can't put weight on it and squash it. Um, that just doesn't work. It's meant to go in your jacket pocket when you go out to dinner, or when you're on the train, uh, you want to take it off your head and stick it in your coat, or maybe your carry-on bag while you're commuting. That's what it's meant for. To try to get it to go beyond that is stretching it. What you need to do, again, get something for it. Uh, what a lot of folks do is they just take hats that are meant for travel and they fold it into quarters, just do whatever, you know, they, they slap it inside a really tight case, pack it, and then they bring it back to me to put them back together like once a year. And, you know, it can be done, but it's a huge job, and um, it's a job I generally do for free, and it takes, you know, like an hour or two. So it's best if you just don't abuse your hats that way and treat them the right way and that way I don't have to spend, you know, lots of time kind of putting it back together. And your hat never looks the same. It just never survives that. Um, there are certain creases you just can't get out. You know, like if a hat is stretched or if there's a deep crease from just folding, folding weight and pressure, 
that that fabric is stretched permanently. You can't get that out. It's like if you take a uh, whatever your Armani suit and you wet it and then you take your knee and you stretch it or you take a pencil and push a hole through it, it doesn't really make a hole but it stretches a hole you could never get that stretch out it's the same thing with hats so things like deep fold and all that you know abuse they, they don't you can't get rid of it you can't erase it so normal everyday use you know like people squeezing it like this and you know blah 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 we can steam that out, it's no problem. So my advice is, if you have a really good hat that doesn't travel, buy a second hat, a cheap travel hat, and use that to fold. Um, there's something called light felt that goes for like 100 bucks, made in USA. They make imitation ones too. Crushable wool felt hats are great, they roll. Or you get something like this, you know, this is an expensive fur felt travel hat, it's also great. Um, Anything travel friendly is good. Uh, my green hat that you always see me wearing this travel, you know, these are all travel hats. Almost everything I wear travels. Um, you get used to it. Once you have one, you like the feel of soft felt and you get used to putting it in your pocket and stuff. Like when you go to a restaurant, they're like, can I check your hat? And you're like, uh-uh, no, you don't have to check my hat. You know why? Check this out. And you're kind of like a magi magician. And she's like, oh, very impressive, Mr. Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Hey, you want to impress your friends? Do that. You know, you get a hat that's crushable. Learn how to crush it. Put it in your, you know, breast pocket. And that way you could look cool when you go out to restaurants, when you go on vacation. You don't have to leave your hat at home. And that's it. We're approaching 28,000 subscriptions. Uh, I want to make it to 3,000, baby. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to me yet, basically there's a little thing down there that says subscribe. And what it does is it just makes my brand new video come to the top of your YouTube display. You don't get any kind of spam or you don't even get notifications unless you hit that bell icon. And that gives you a little, you know, like messages that are, I have a new video, if you will want that, but um, generally my videos come out on Wednesdays, Thursdays, sometimes Sundays, but uh, those are the three days they generally come out, um, my days off, and Sunday's a short day, so I have time to do it before and after work, and I don't know, we really want to get to 3,000 subs, so if we can do that, uh, we're pretty close to it now, we're going to do something special, like... I don't know. Maybe we're going to have a hat giveaway. That, I think, is awesome. Um, I have brand new hats that really need a new owner. So, um, yeah, we get what you call a season hat uh, working at JJ's, which is called, um, you know, we get one free hat from working there every year. And I'm here 24 years. So you actually get one summer, one winter. So that's like, you know, 48 hats or something. That's a lot of hats, plus all the other ones I've acquired for free from sales reps and you know, things I've just bought. And there's tons and tons of hats at JJ's um, that I've acquired. And there was about nine years where I wore nothing but this black cap called the Roadster. It's like a black newsboy cap kind of thing with no snaps that you kind of pull back. Like a, I don't know what you call it. It's a, they call it a Baker Boy cap now, or a Spitfire. Anyway, I went about nine years wearing this black wool one, a black velvet one, and uh, maybe a, uh, a gray herringbone one too. And that's all I wore were these two black caps, like 99% of the time, for like a decade. Every year I would get a season hat, and you know, I already had like four of these caps, and I didn't need more, you know. So I figured, okay, I'm not going to take a cheap cap, I'm going to take a good hat. So I grabbed, you know, porcelinos and nice hats for my season hats and stashed them away. So I have like two really brand new borsalino hats in like a good size that never ever um, were touched. They're like up on the top of my closet from like years ago. Um, I have to find them out. I'm not even exactly sure what size they are or what color they are, but I think I have a really nice... You might even call it vintage now because I think these are probably like 20 years old or something, but brand new, you know, like never worn, never touched. So I'm going to try to uh, dig that out and see what it is and, you know, um, 
kind of auctioned it off, or not auction, what do you call it, like a, a sweepstakes kind of thing, you know. I am going to uh, pick all the subscribers, um, when I hit 3,000, everybody can just sort of enter this contest, and whoever wins it gets the hat. Uh, I'm generally about a 7, 3 eighths or so, like 58, 59, pretty sure it should be around that, that's what I used to buy. And later on, I started buying hats more oversized, like up to 61, but in the old uh, beginning days of Kevin working there, I, I bought hats a little bit more true to size, so pretty sure they're around 3, but I could be wrong, they could be bigger, like 5 eighths or something. Um, yeah, I definitely have a new hat, maybe two of them, I, that might be a little overconfident, I think there's probably one that's total, like completely unworn, so I will definitely uh, give that one away at $3,000, because that was about a $375 hat in like the 90s, you know, like 20 years ago, so now it would be like, you know, a Four hundred fifty, five hundred dollar hat, and it's rare. You know, you can't get them. It's just totally like impossible to get. Thank you.